Good morning, everyone. Um, so my name is Jessica, and today I would like to talk to you about organizing conferences for learners and share my experience with you on how we did it back in Namibia. So first of all, thank you very much for your presence here and for joining me for this talk. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank the sponsors because they made it possible for me to come here and share some African awesomeness with you guys. So let's thank them with a round of applause, please. Okay, so I'm from the southwestern part of Africa, from Namibia, from a small town village called Okakarara. My first encounter with Python was at Python Namibia 2015. Now, as you can see in this picture, I'm one of the people in the front line holding the banner or supporting the banner, but I had no business whatsoever being there because my reasons for going for that conference was not to learn Python or I wasn't curious about Python or anything like that. I went to the conference because it was at the beginning of the year and I was coming from holiday, I was bored and I had the time, and also because the conference was free. So I thought there would be free food anyway, so let me just go. But at the end of the conference, the experience that I got after attending the conference and meeting the community was one that I'd never experienced before. So I would like to take this opportunity again to um, thank my dear friend Daniele Procida for putting aside his fears and bringing a conference to Africa, to a land he had never been. And as you may know, there's a lot of stories about how one can die in Africa. So thank you very much to you and to the Cardiff team and to the Phoenix Project from bring, for bringing this uh, conference back in Africa. It brought um, a lot of opportunities for Africans. It opened a lot of our eyes as well. Um, this uh, talk that I'm going to talk about, about the, the conference for learners, it couldn't have been because, um, if it wasn't for you. So thanks a lot for your efforts. Now, over the past three years, the Python community in Namibia grew from this group of people to this group of people in 2018. So again, thank you very much for your efforts. Now, let's talk about Computer Day 2017. Now, Computer Day 2017 was a conference uh, that we organized for just one day. Now, my idea was, I don't know what I'm getting myself into, I don't know what I'm doing, so let me just make this conference a one-day conference. If it's going to be the worst day of my life, then let it just be that one day and no more. So I made it a one-day conference where we had a lineup of talks um, throughout the whole day, and then we also had a break for uh, software application presentation and poster presentations during that day. Now, uh, our main focus for Computer Day is having talks and panel discussions. So at Computer Day 2017, we had two panel discussions, one with the Dean of uh, Faculty of Computer Science at two of our most uh, highly recognized universities in Namibia, and also another talk. Okay, they shared, for example, the career opportunities that are there and how the learners could prepare for the uh, university and things like that, like how, how many points they needed to have, what um, courses they could take, and the way forward. So we also had another panel discussion, and this one was with um, former students who are now in the industry, and also with university students who are still in the university. So here we wanted to um, give the children an opportunity to learn, for example, what, what attitude they needed to have in order for them to be successful in the industry and things like that. So. Um, the students were sharing their um, mistakes and um, some tips on how the children could be better students when they get to university. We also had poster presentations. <clears throat> now, these ones were just posters on theoretical um, concepts in computer science. So children made poster, posters about that, did research, and then they presented on the day. We also had software project presentations. Now, kids. Uh, created small software applications and then they showed to the others also at the conference. Now for Computer Day 2017, we only had the first three, the talks, the posters and the software presentations and not the workshops. Now workshops came at Computer Day 2018 and they came about because of, the key, because of what the kids uh, requested in the, after the first conference. Okay, 
So this is a picture, is one of the pictures of um, one of the presentations during Computer Day 2017, where the kids were now showing their software applications to the others. And then that is a poster presentation for one of my grade, uh, for three of my grade eight learners. As you can see, they are very, very shy. They know what they are talking about, but they are very, very shy. And I was uh, grateful for their courage to show up on the day and share their experience with the others. Okay, so um, those are the two deans that we had for the day that shared their experience with us. And then at Computer Day 2018, we had a panel discussion, one of my most interesting panel discussions with the learners themselves. So here we are talking about how we as teachers or how we as software developers can assist them in building great computer scientists. So here they shared some of the mistakes I was making as a teacher. I didn't mention that I was a school teacher, did I? Um, so I learned a lot as well on this day. And then uh, Computer Day 2018. Now, Computer Day 2018, as I mentioned, uh, it had workshops. So now, instead of making it a one-day conference, I made it a two-day conference. The first day was workshops. And um, <coughs> sorry, we had two uh, all-day workshops. So one was Introduction to Python that ran for the entire day. And the other one was a Jungle Girls workshop that also ran for the entire day. Now, the interesting thing about the Jungle Girls workshop is that we had, or I had, I didn't have to do much. I just needed to direct them. So they organized themselves, they, they organized the, the, the workshop themselves, the, the scholars, and they also coached the workshop themselves. So what we did was I took some of the learners who were comfortable with programming. So a few weeks before the conference, I took them and we went through the Jungle Girls tutorial. So we practiced it until they were confident enough to coach the others, and then I didn't have to worry about finding coaches for them during the conference. <clears throat> so, um, and then the following day was just a series of talks where we had the same, um, the same scenario as we did in 2017. Now, I would like to share a couple of differences between organizing a conference for learners and organizing a conference for adults because I've been in, in both worlds and uh, I would like to share this experience with you in case you are... Um, looking into organizing this in your community. Okay. Now, when you are organizing a conference for adults, they have the money. So all, they do, all you do is just open the tickets and take ticket sales and then they buy the tickets, isn't it? Now with kids, they don't have money and they depend on their parents. And not all parents know the necessity of having events like conferences for the learners. So personally, I have to write letters to each and every child's parent and tell them the importance of the conference, why the kids should attend the conference, and also somehow put in there that it's compulsory for the kids to buy the tickets because otherwise they won't buy it. So, and then you have to answer some calls to some parents if they call and say, no, why should we pay that much money or why should we pay anything at all for the conference and all of that. And then there's also behavior. Now, this point is very important because if you are thinking of organizing a conference for learners, you need to be prepared for the behavior of the learners. You see, like for adults, the environment is uh, matured, it's chilled, and everyone is listening and focused and all of that, right? With kids, they will get bored very fast. They will start playing games. They will start having chit chats in the, in, 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 while they are seated. And they will move around and tinker around anyway. So if you are organizing a conference for learners, you need to have a team of coaches to control every movement of the learners. Otherwise, anything can go wrong anytime and you don't want that. Now, um, the thing is, wh what I've noticed is that as a teacher, the way I treat the children and the way anyone else will treat the children who is not a teacher is different. So with kids, they will do stuff and they will look for attention, right? So with uh, anyone who's not a teacher, they would be polite with the kids. But I'm telling you, you have to be hard on them. Because they are just looking for attention and you need to be strong. Otherwise, you can lose control during the whole conference and you don't want that. Okay, different expectations. So with the adult conference, you see everyone, basically, most people know why they are at the conference. They are, most of you, for example, are software developers and you know why you are here. You know the format of the conference and so forth. With school kids, they, most of them have never been to a conference. And for them, they want to have fun and games and then 
for me, for example, the first time I organized the conference, it was just a series of talks and no breaks, not a lot, like, not, I didn't have a lot of breaks and I didn't have a, a lot of fun things to do in between. So the kids came in and they wanted to work with computers. They thought they were going to work on computers and then they come, they're sitting the whole day and listening to talks nonstop. So they have different expectations. Perhaps maybe you can explain to them beforehand, before the conference, so that they know exactly what to expect instead of them coming and them getting bored because they had expected something different. Fun and games. So if you are organizing a conference, it would be nice to include one or two things that are fun. Um, I don't know what uh, children would enjoy in your area. Maybe poets or maybe um, a band singing for maybe five, ten minutes or dancing or whatever it is. Or maybe playing games outside or virtual reality, some type of something, just for them to have a break where they are distracted and they um, don't get bored during the, con during the conference or during the day. And also speakers. Now, with speakers, I had to choose the type of topics that I would or that I wanted the kids to, uh, to learn about. And I also had to select the speakers. I had to headhunt the speakers because I wanted to have a conference where the, the topics that were going to be discussed were um, the kids could comprehend what the speakers were saying. Because you could have great talks, but the kids are not familiar with most of the concepts that are used in computer science, so they would not even comprehend what the speakers would be speaking about. So I had to headhunt the speakers. I had to also look at the talks beforehand to see that, you know, this is easy enough for the kids to understand and so forth. So if you are organizing a conference, you cannot just um, open, to, uh, open um, um, uh, what do you say? Um, open what? Call for proposals. You can't just do that. You have to headhunt the, the people. Let's say, for example, you want to you want a talk on career opportunities, then you would want you would find someone for that. You want a talk on uh, networking, you would want to find someone for that, and also sort of like go through the talk and make sure that it's not too technical for the kids to comprehend and things like that. Uh, and then funding. Um, when I organized Computer Day, it was something that no one knew about. So no one was really interested in supporting the event. And also, the, the audience of the learners. Most companies don't find that as their customers. So they are not interested in, in investing in an in in audience like that. So fun, funding for me was very, very difficult. Um, I did not find any local sponsors until today. Um, but maybe in your community it will be a different scenario, but funding is one thing that we struggled with, with Computer Day. And then decorations. I cannot emphasize this enough because, you see, as beautiful as this venue is to us, to the kids, it's not that beautiful. It needs to have color, it needs to have balloons, it needs to have all sorts of decorations. So when you are organizing yours, don't be shy to put as many balloons and as many colorful stuff around your room as you can because this to them is boring. Okay, now, what, are, what is the importance of organizing a conference, or how do the kids benefit from Computer Day? Now, they get to apply the knowledge that they have learned into the classroom. For example, if um, you teach, for example, about robotics or something like that, when kids do some research and they have some live presentations or whatever that they are presenting at Computer Day, then the others get to actually say, aha, uh -huh, this is what Ms. Upani was saying in the classroom and so forth. And then also, they get to learn more than what they learned in the classroom. If a grade 12, for example, is uh, presenting on a concept uh, that a grade 8 had never learned before, then uh, the grade 8 learner is going to learn something even before they get to grade 12. Um, inspire computing career choices. Now, for example, if one learner um, is passionate enough about computing or about programming and then they create a game and so forth, and then they show this game at computer day. Then the other learner is going to be like, aha, this is also doable by a learner like me. Then maybe I can also take this passion or the, take this path and learn co uh, gaming and stuff. So it does motivate or bring out like actual career um, opportunities that are existing in the community instead of just hearing about them. Passion and knowledge, okay? Now, um, if, if a learner is, for example, pre preparing for a poster or for 
whatever it is that they want to present at the conference. They have to do deep research. They have to do um, research more than what they have learned in the classroom. Or sometimes they are researching on a new concept and they want to be confident enough to present to the others. They have to do deep research. And in, 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 um, in this sense, they are going to learn or get deeper knowledge on that. And then challenge themselves as well. So like basically I have a programming team at the school. Now when you are learning programming just um, at a smaller scale, it's different from when you are actually creating an application that will impress someone else, for example. Right? So for Computer Day, Computer Day is an opportunity for learners to create applications that are going to be impressive to others because you can't just create anything floppy because you want to show off, right? So they will, this forces them to create applications that are really running and that are lively and that are impressive to the others. So in, in, in that sense, they get to challenge themselves. Okay. Now the big question is why? Why did we start organizing Computer Day in the first place? Now when I started teaching, I started teaching computer studies in 2016. So I come to the school, I'm supposed to teach kids about computer science, I'm supposed to give them practical work and all of that. But I'm teaching more than 250 learners and there's no single computer at the school. Now what do I do? How do I give these children practice? How do I show them that there's a world of computing, of programming, when they have nothing to see that on? or to practice that on, okay? So this was a problem that I first uh, faced when I started working. Now, we, I worked through several solutions that were able to help me move forward during the time. So what I would do is, for example, the first thing was that I knew about a programming competition that was coming up and I wanted the kids to participate. I didn't expect them to win or anything like that. I just wanted them to participate and get in that environment. So, but I needed computers again for them to practice, for me to teach them on and so forth, right? Now, the fortunate thing is, at uh, Python Namibia 2016, Pynam Society, which is the Python Namibia Society, received eight Raspberry Pis. So I was able to get some screens and some keyboards and mouse, and we were able to practice on these uh, little devices. We also um, uh, wrote letters to the universities locally and they were able to give us their labs during like weekends for example so we could go to um, the university and, and do some practice at the, the university. Or like e either during the weekend or sometimes also during the time when they are on holiday. Okay, but you see this is this is not something that is going to solve a problem in the long, in the, in the, in the long run, right? And not every teacher is willing to make these efforts to help the learners get access to computers or to, to even programming or anything like that. What these kids need is more than what I can offer. I can only offer this bit. I can only keep them together. I can only introduce them to computing at this smaller scale. But if they can't practice on a continuous basis or if only the kids at my school are able to go to a university and start programming and no other teacher is willing to do that, then it's going to be a problem. What the children need is a team of people who are going to make efforts to even at least sponsor a school or at least one school per year, even with just 15 to 20 computers. Because this is not a problem that I'm experiencing alone as a teacher at my school. This is a problem that is being experienced within all government schools in my country and I don't have the resources to help them. And of course, what I'm doing now is not going to sustain a good or build a good computer science um, base in, in my country or in my school or whatever. So what we need is a team of people who are, or partners who are willing to help at least one school per year with 15 to 20 computers um, sponsorship so that the kids are, or more than my kids, have an opportunity to, to have access to computers. So the main reason why we organized Computer Day was because we wanted to do fundraising for the lack of computers at my school. We are still doing fundraising after two years because we don't really have a lot of support. And then after how many years is it going to be until we get to actually buy computers for this one school? And then how are we going to solve this problem for all the other schools that are coming up? Because I, I cannot do anything. I don't have the resources to do anything. So I would, I would, I would wish for someone to, to, to help me 
you know, in coming up with solutions or talking to someone somewhere to, to assist even more than one school or at least one school per year with just 15 computers or 20 computers or whatever the case may be. A little bit of help will go a long way. Okay. Now, this is our social media um, platform names. So when you go on Twitter, you can find us at Pinam Scholars or Python Namibia or PyCon Namibia. They will, you will see like what we do on a day-to-day -day basis or see pictures of the things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, I would like to thank the Python uh, Software Foundation and Django uh, project for sponsoring Computer Day 2017. These were our only two sponsors, and they were the only people who could make us have that day possible anyway. So I would like to thank them a lot for believing in us, even though they know nothing about us, and we had nothing to prove to them, you know, to say that this is really going to happen or this is really going to be beneficial. But then again, they trusted us, and they gave us some funding to make the whole thing possible. In 2018, we got sponsorship again from PSF. We got a sponsorship from Python Anywhere and Investec. Investec is a company in South Africa. I don't know what got over their hearts to trust us with anything, but then at least they gave us something, and I was very grateful for that. Sticker Mule also sponsored us with Betches and also Wildfish. I think, uh, not I think, Wildfish is a UK-based company, and again, um, we are very grateful for the help that they gave us. I'm done. Any questions? We have time for uh, one or two questions, I think. So if you have some questions, please step up. We have two micro three microphones in, in the middle of the room. Hello. Yep. Hi, Jessica. Thanks so much uh, for, for this uh, wonderful talk and for, for sharing. Um, I feel that perhaps I'm a bit of a primary target for, for, for your uh, experiences. Um, but I think there's also um, a lot of people who aren't here um, today who could really benefit. And I hope they're uh, going to see the video. Um, and uh, I hope maybe a guy called Ruben from Msusu University in Malawi is watching this right now. Um, I want to ask you, what can someone do, um, for instance, at a university in Africa to get started with a, with a conference like this? Where, where can they go? Who, who should they talk to? Thank you. Um, okay, so you're asking if what a university could do to organize a conference like this. The best thing is to speak to school authorities, um, speak to a, a school teacher who teaches computer studies, so that they relay the message to the learners in your absence. Um, you could also approach the schools directly because those are the people that you are targeting, right? You want the students. So you want to go to them and talk to the principal, talk to the computer studies teacher, talk to the learners even for an hour or so and explain what your goal is and what you want to do. And then you can start building a relationship and say, okay, fine, when is your holiday or when is the right time for us to organize something for the learners or what do your learners need? then you can get them involved and say, we want this, we want that, or we want workshops only, we want talks, or we want what, then you can use that idea to um, build your conference. I mean, the format doesn't have to be like the one that we did. It can be however you want to make it, or however it's suitable for your area. But, I mean, the best thing is to talk to the schools. Okay. Oh, no, one more. Jessica, thanks a lot. What proportion of the school learners, but also of the people who are helping you run these events, actually have access to computers of their own at home, for example? I would say, like out of, let's say, out of, let's say, maybe 20 learners, right? You can have four learners who have a computer. Either they borrowed from someone, from their sister or brother, or maybe their parent bought for them. But then again, this is a situation, even sometimes they can be six or so, right? But this is learners that are in the city. 
there are lots of learners who are not even able to have a computer at all. So normally what we do in, our, in, in my instance is that whoever brings, let's say we, have, we are 20 learners and we have four computers, right? We, we share. So however many we are, we are going to share those four computers within the groups and then we just switch, for example, we pair program. So we just switch who's going to be in charge of the computer um, over time, but then we make it work for those four computers that we have at the time. Um, when we, what we did with uh, Computer Day 2018 is that I asked the learners to bring computers, those who could bring computers, and at the venue where we were at, I hired or I rented um, the computer lab. So the Django Girls Workshop moved to the lab, and then I took computers from all the girls who had uh, laptops, and I took them to the team, uh, to the group that was doing uh, introduction to Python. So they, they could um, share those computers there, and then we would use the, the lab computers at that time. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jessica. It was a really great talk. We're going to take... Yeah. <laughs> Jessica, this is for you. Thank you so much. It was really great.